Okay, so today I want to talk about the response object with Express. So we've talked about how Express works and the request object. We've talked about the HTTP verbs and understanding how routes get put together and all the things that can be sent to our server. But what about what we can send back from the response? So somebody makes an API call. We've got an API that we've built and somebody makes a call to that. Or we've built a web server and somebody's requesting content for that web server. Whichever kind of server we're building, we need to be able to send stuff back to the user as they request it. So at the top of the file here, I've got a link to the official Express documentation. This is the response object documentation here. So if you want to take a look at that, I recommend you go through it. Uh, with any product, it's really a good idea once you've got over your initial discovery of what the thing can do, once you understand the basics of how something functions, it's always a good idea to take a look at the official documentation. You'll find all kinds of things that you won't hear about in most tutorials. So, even mine. <laughs> there are things that I just don't bother talking about in some tutorials. But, that being said, let's get into all the things that we can do with response. So I've got a very simple server set up here. I've included uh, Express. I'm defaulting to port 3000. I'm then looking for just the root and I'm sending, I'm listening for any incoming calls. We're going to talk about all these different things that we can do with this request that's coming in. So the first and most basic one is send. Now this one lets you send content back to the user. Now my content could be just plain text or it could be HTML. So I could create an entire HTML file here and send it back. The cool thing about send with Express is it will look at what you were sending back and try to determine what's the most appropriate content type. It sends back the status 200 to say, yeah, here we go. I've got some content for you. This is the type. Here's uh, we're 200 status. We're all good to go. So we get all of that stuff built into send. Now end is very, very close to this. Send and end, very closely related. The difference between them is that end is not going to set any type header. It's not going to say the content type of what you're sending back is uh, HTML or text. So if you ever want to set the header for yourself, end is the one that you should be using, not send. Uh, it also doesn't set an e tag header to give kind of a version of the file saying, okay, here's the hash that identifies the file. This is the current version of the file to make sure that you've got the right one cached. It doesn't do any of that stuff. It just sends the content. That's all it does. Send will send the content, but also looks to find, figure out what kind of type it is. All right. So that's send and end. I'm going to move that one up and we'll comment these ones out again with res file or res send file. As you can imagine, this one is sending back a file. Instead of just content, it's an actual file. So over here in my file system, I've got a folder called image. Here's this image that I've got. I could go in here and say, you know what? I'm going to send back to the user something in the image folder called cottoncandy.gif. There we go. So that is now going to send that file, the appropriate headers, just like send up here, it will set the appropriate headers to say it's an image slash GIF, and that will be sent to the user. If a problem occurs, we do have an error function that we can use. I'm just logging it out right now, but you would probably want to actually do something here to say that, nope, there was an issue, I don't have that file, or whatever the problem was. Okay, moving on, we've got JSON. This is similar to send and end, you're sending back text content, but in this case, you are explicitly saying that what you are sending back is going to be a JSON object or a JSON string. So I could create my object in here. There we go. I've got my object. It's going to take that. It's going to stringify it as JSON and send the string back to the user. Great. Okay. Redirect. Um, if you have an old version of an API or a website and you've changed some content, you've changed some file names, sometimes you're going to want to maintain support for the old version and have your new content there as well. So if somebody requests the old version, you can do this. You can send to the browser a redirect. 
I'm setting them a 301 status, which means permanently moved. And here's the new URL that they should use. So this is going to go to the browser. The browser is going to say, oh, OK, there's a new location for this file. And it's going to send the request for other. Then that will come back to the browser. So the browser has to make two requests. But we've automated the process. Instead of sending a 404 error to the user saying, hey, we can't find your file, we're telling the browser, no, I know there used to be a file called that, but this is where it is now. All right. Format. Now, this is a cool one. With format, let me uncomment all that. Browsers are allowed to ask for different versions of a file. Just like with emails, you can get a plain text email, you can get an HTML version of an email. Um, maybe when a resource is requested, you've got a route which includes a method and an endpoint, but you've got different versions of that content. So build an API and say, okay, you can ask for the content as plain text, as HTML, as JSON, or even we could say, I'm going to send it back as text slash XML. There we go. So now I'm doing a res.send and I will send back my XML version one. I have to match up my quotation marks here. Okay, so that's just <laughs> quick and dirty. If we had a whole bunch of XML data, we could send that back as well. So the user has a choice of how they get their content. They can include that inside of the headers to say, you know what, here's the list of response types that I'm going to allow or that I would like. Here's the order that I want them in. This is sort of my priority sequencing. If you've got JSON, that's the one I want. But if you don't have it, I'll accept XML. So we can set that. That's what the format header is for, or this format method is to say, this is the content that I'm going to be sending back. So it allows you to negotiate with the browser which type of content you're going to send back. And it comes with a very handy default um, property down here at the bottom. Actually, I should have quotation marks around that. There we go. And the default will send back a response saying, you know what, you told me that you had this kind of content that you wanted back. There was a specific type of content you wanted, but I don't have that to give you. So 406, not acceptable. I'm not accepting your request because I don't have content of that type to send you. Okay, so that is the format. Then links. This is uh, setting another header. Um, so with format, we were actually sending the content back with links. What we're doing is we're setting, um, it's like we're setting link tags up inside the top of the browser. Uh, inside your HTML up in the head, you can set links to say, okay, here's the previous page, here's the next page. If we're doing paginated content, here's the first link, the last link, or relative, you know, what's the, maybe there's multiple ways that you can request this page. I have another video on canonical links. Basically, you're saying this is the one proper URL that you should use for this page. I know you can request it multiple ways, but this is the real URL that all those other ways are going to point to. So I've got one canonical link uh, prefetch and preload. So if you're telling the browser, hey, you're going to need these resources. So once you're done with the main thing that I've sent you back, here's some other resources that you're going to want. So we can help that by telling them ahead of time. When the initial response goes back, we're telling the browser, you're also going to need these things in the future. All right, so those are headers that we can set. That sets the link header. It's not the actual link. It's not injecting into the HTML. I just want to be clear on that. It's not adding to the HTML, but it's accomplishing the same purpose. It is actually setting a header in the HTTP response to tell the browser about these things. Okay, rendering. Now I'm going to do another video, video on rendering of content using templates, specifically Pug, but um, I have to talk about it here because we're doing the render method. If you have a template to generate content, now I've got a simple one here. Here is my template. I'm generating 
doc type, HTML tag, head tag, title tag, body tag, three paragraphs with some attributes. And these are variables that I'm writing out in that content. If I'm using render, I need to make sure that I'm specifying up here at the top what the view engine is and where the views are located. So here's my pug file that's inside of a folder called views. That's what I'm doing here. I'm getting the current working directory and I'm appending views onto that. So I'm pointing to this folder and this is the name that I'm going to refer to this folder with. So down here, I'm going to render my view. It's going to look to this folder and look for something called my view. And there it is. So it renders that, it sends it back to the browser. And this is just an example. I can pass another way of passing variables in. Uh, I will do another video on Pug and how we can integrate that with Express. These two kind of go together, set and append. Set, I'm setting one header or I'm setting an initial header. And then append lets me add more headers onto it. So if you're going to set a whole bunch of headers, do the first one as set and then append for the, the rest of them. Uh, cookie, if you were going to send cookies back to the browser. So we've got a name and a value at the very least. And then there's an options object. And inside the options object, oh, I got an extra parenthesis there. Inside the options object, you can define things like where's the cookie valid? What's the domain, subdomain, the path that this cookie can be used on? Secure, is it HTTPS only? Uh, max age, or you can use expires if you prefer. Uh, this one is 30 days worth of milliseconds. Status, if you are just doing something like this. All right, I'm not sending any content back. What you've requested doesn't exist, so I'm setting a status 404, and I'm just firing back the response to, to tell Express, hey, I'm done with this response. Please send the whole thing so the browser knows that the response is done. Uh, so we have those, we've got type. If for some reason you needed to set the content type, now you can use re the response.set method or the type method. These two are doing the same thing. I mean, it's two different content types, but doing the same thing. Now the last couple of ones I have here have to do with files. So let's do this. We had the send file up above. So let me bring that down here just so we can compare just a moment. Okay, I'll put it right in the middle. All right, so we have attachment, send file, and download. Attachment, what that does is it sets the content disposition header. I'm going to be dealing with the fact that I'm sending a file back in some other piece of code. Maybe I've got another function that I'm going to call here and I'm going to dynamically build a PNG file, or I'm going to take a couple of files, smash them together, or compress it, or do something. But I'm going to be handling the fact that I'm sending back my file with some other code. Maybe it's just going to be Node.js, not touching Express at all. But I need to set the header for this. I'm saying this is going to be the file name that the user is going to see. So regardless of what it actually is, or regardless of what I'm building, this is the file name the user is going to see. And the content disposition header is going to be set to say that this is an attachment. Now, attachment is doing the same thing as this download function. Here's the actual file. This is the file name that I'm giving it. And the download function sets the content disposition header to attachment as well. And that is an instruction to the browser to say, you're not going to render this in the browser itself. You're not going to render it in a way that the user can see. What you're going to do is you're going to trigger the save dialog. So if I, just to demonstrate this, if I comment these two out, save that. Now, all I'm doing is res download. I don't think I've got anything else uncommented. Nope. All right, so when I make a request for just the root URL, I'm going to be sending back this image. So in our browser, when I make a request just for the root, oh, I have to actually start my server. That would help. There we go, listening on port 3000. And once again, I will send the request for that. 
here it is. So candy, that was the name. I know it's pretty small here for you guys to see, but candy, this is the name that I was telling him. This is the actual name, but this is the name that I'm giving. And I now can save that file. And if we want to look at it, there it is. This is the animated GIF. Uh, if you've ever seen this one, <laughs> you can uh, download it. I will include this file. You can take a look at this. This kid just goes nuts over cotton candy. Um, all right, so that's it. Those are the methods for the response object. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we can do with the response object. Let me shut this down. So I recommend you take a look at the official documentation. You can download this source file to play around with the functions, experiment with it, figure out what each one of them do to become familiar with it all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.